Oh god. Okay. That's enough of that. Let's see what Preach was saying about the... Uh, oh, this is the role players and the RP community's wish list of features for the WoW Community Council. I haven't even checked the WoW Council thing. I've not even looked. I, it's like I barely could even care. Where is it? it barely could even care. That's is. how I've felt well, about I'm it. But everybody seems to be talking asking. about it. And I think it's working because uh, I almost bought the game the last night. I think last night I almost resubscribed to the game because people were talking about it so much. Blasting? Are they coming out guns blazing? Or are they being like polite? It's like, you are know, sure? th that significant other that's mistreating you, but you keep coming back. What rules did they <laughs> I assume they gave them some rules. <laughs> it's a toxic it's relationship, Preach. Don't do it. Introduce yourself here. So they've only had 40 replies here. Welcome to the WoW Community Council Forum. This forum is where WoW Community Council members and Blizz reps can post anything related to WoW. Please keep in mind that all the content of this forum are publicly visible. Only council members and Blizz reps can post here. I uh, heard Asmund do an interview with somebody and they says it's really just like a glorified general forums. It's like a specialized forums. While well, community council members have been selected from among the many thousands of applications. Thousands. Uh, varied experience playing and posting about the game, as well as their diverse perspectives. We will continue to add council members as often as necessary to bolster every kind of discussion here. And council members will be removed one year after they were first added to the program. The application to join the WoW Council is currently closed. However, we may open it again at any time. Here's a good place to get started. So what's their experience here? Hey everyone, I'm left last the Koji of one shot on Beknilash. I was thinking one year? President served, ter served terms for four years and they still don't get much done in that amount of time. Like sometimes if what they're doing is so important, they try to get reelected to finish their thing. It's real. It's a real thing. I don't know how we got onto that. Let's continue back to DK a... <laughs> main since I thought I, I 100 thought I was going to say since vanilla. Uh, I could play Blood for the Raid team. My heart is with Frost. I also love my Venthyr MM Hunter. Oh God, they've got noobs on the council. The oh team. man! As a member of the council, I'm hoping to voice not in my opinions, but blah. Oh, this is cool. Bruce Step. Yeah, cutting edge Raider first and foremost. All right, so Raider, Raider. Uh, I am generally interested in old raiding, raiding content for transmog and mounts. Okay. Uh, I also have blue color blindness. Oh, that's cool. Okay. Oh, that's cool to have color blindness, but somebody with that sort of attention to detail. Uh, I'm Basil, resident uh, Boomkin, TBC Classic Boomkin. Oh, okay. So they didn't just do it on the modern game. Fair enough. Uh,. ATS wielding WoW Classic, so old school player as well. My heart is with the Druids. Uh, I've got at least a little bit of interest in every facet of the game I can think about. I dabble in RP, good. Mountain Transmogs. See, this is why you don't want it. He should be anonymous. I really care about the, the individuals. <laughs> Hello, I'm World PvP. I can't believe it's not yeah, anonymous. High rank PvP, good. That's, yeah, uh, me, wow, I don't. 2005, like, wow, it's not anonymous. Pro, uh, focused on PvP, all right. Uh, anybody who's doing like pet battles and uh, archaeology and professions, that kind of thing. Uh, May forums I started playing WoW during the early days of the Burning Crusade. Another old school player. I'm not a cutting edge player, not a super mythic farmer. Uh, I have my Keystone Master ahead of the curve. Okay. Oh, you're linking your mains? Oh, dudes. Don't do that, mm. man. Uh, the game's consistently been ra another Raider. All right. Playing again since March 2005. A lot of old school players that I'm seeing, at least on the announcement portion. A lot of old school players. Oh, there's some new school players. Uh, I do on Plus. Goes to Judge is the newcomer chat. Oftentimes, there's a newcomer chat? No way. His lease in the background oh, is a <laughs> little no distracting. Oftentimes, I'll find myself logging in simply see if anyone needs help. What a dude! I ain't going in newcomer chat. Fuck that. Fuck that noise. I ain't going there. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not dealing with it. I'll just spam my links to my YouTube channel. I'll be that helpful. I'll be that guy. Uh, one of the things I feel I spend most time walking on the council is the semi-casual player base of the game. 
the people that aren't pushing cutting edge, but they are doing just LFR normal. Uh, uh, okay, so we've got somebody who's a bit more on the casual side. Uh, this seems boring. Uh, you might recognize me from the tech consumer. We got boomers in the MVP. chat. Let me make a suggestion for the I've game I'll play no matter what. <laughs> He's like, I'll make a suggestion uh, for the game. I'm going to play it no matter what. I'll uh, make a suggestion. Right, so another very old school player. Okay. Focus on the AH. Ah. That's what something I haven't seen so far. An auction house main? For the council, my biggest areas of focus are customer support. Casual should not be a negative term. No, it shouldn't. Uh, accessibility and last time concerns about culture in game. There are some things that might make WoW a more welcoming players to the new, old, and returning players. Okay. Uh, currencies. What is, is not, and should be account wide. That's going to be a really interesting topic. Account wide currencies? Account -wide? If they did this. There are a number of currencies in the game that should be account wide. I so would be unstoppable. Because uh, then any character I play would be valid. Yes. <laughs> you roll coins from previous expansions. Yes. My biggest like, yes, problem was just I yes. always had to pick Curious one coins, character yes. if I wanted that shit. Water hole resources. Yes. A yes. Crystals. Yes. Why not? Yeah. This is all old school stuff. Other courses that should not be account wide: conquest, honor, valor. Okay. Soul lash and cinders. Obviously, I think uh, I that. I mean, these are kind of right. You can soul lash. Soul lashes. Um. I don't know what cinders are. All reputations, in my opinion. All reputations should be account wide. Other items should be added to the Anima? currency tab. Yeah, animas on that list. Yeah. Marks of honor, Other yep. Other items that should be added to the currency tab. Trials, Marks, yeah. Polish, pet charms, yeah. yes. Yeah. Trial style why tokens. Why not? Yeah. I mean, who cares, but why not? There's a lot of currencies. Yeah, there's a huge amount. Is he thinking about the coding aspect? Like, are for terrible gear, like anything that rewards practically. It always freaks me out when they hit their desk. On an alt. They got the microphones. They go, boom, boom. Of course and I'm like, because <laughs> I think someone's here. <laughs> I don't think everything should be, not everything. And then Asmin sometimes his headphones purposes. get close to if his it's rewarding ear. Rewarding some really low level stuff in the background and mounts, cosmetics and stuff like that. Sure, he's still grinding it out, right? Alt friendliness. Ooh. Each expansion is pitched as being alt friendly, but they end up being more unfriendly than the last. Oh uh, yeah. Oh uh, yeah. Oh uh, yeah. This is where my expertise comes in. At this point, it's just a buzzword. When you hear it, you know to expect that if you want uh, yeah. an alt, you should probably bite the bullet and multi box if uh, yeah. you want to maintain multiple uh, yeah. characters. Oh uh, yeah. Look at Shadowlands specifically. I like to go over the systems that were and were not alt friendly. Alt friendly, renowned. The fact that his weekly gate was really good for an expansion level power system. Gating is not APs alt friendly. I don't. Snap. Social pressure put on yourself. There should be no uh, cap. External forces. Just let yeah, the kids play. Endlessly. Saving place from the problem is the server shorters. The server chip I shorters a bit. For me. I don't know. Uh, the fact that all the key rewards were account wide when you unlocked it was great. Not alt friendly. Mythic plus rating. In season one, Correct. there was account wide progress, and this meant that there was nothing I loved more than miles. dungeons. I mean, two, and I thought M pluses changed. were for me, you but they were not. Each character. The point here is that when we went live in one state, it changed to another after expectations had been set. Yup. Ooh, mythic plus rating. I huh. thought it was going to be like that uh, to begin with. The fact that they made it not like that, it's like, okay, you made something different. That's fine. Like, I'm kind of on the fence on this one. If you're a really, really good Frost Mage and get 2.2k or whatever, or 3k, right, as an M plus rating, but you are dog on your fucking rogue. You are absolute dog. And that happens all the time. You are the mutt fucking sweaty balls on your rogue. And it's undergeared and it's shit. I don't. I mean, you should be able That's to see. That's the rub. The rub is like you have to bring in your weaker characters every once in a while and gear those up. Unless you go slow enough to gear up your weaker characters with the rest, or just like tell people that's what you're doing from the start. Like you end up in this situation where everybody's leapfrog progression from the initial start, and then to go back and level that other guy to catch him up to where everybody's at is just too much of an ask. So before you get to that point, keep that guy relevant. But nobody wants to run that much. <laughs> it's just like you're trying to trade people's free time whenever you have alts. It's like uh, I ended up playing solo just because of that. Like uh, any guild that I would join, I think that they would get like, uh, I don't know if they would. It's weird because 
the way you'd have to invite your alts, you'd have to do them all individually one at a time and take somebody's time to do that if you have a ton of alts. And if you're maximizing that, then like people are like, this is a ton of work. <laughs> Gearing up all these characters is a lot of work. And what happens in most of the guilds that I would join early on, I would see like the, the flow of people who would come in gear up their characters and then go to a guild that's pushing raid progression and then there would be another character come in and then gear up their characters and go on to another guild to push raid progression and you could do that too or you could like actually make friends in a guild <laughs> and stick around and uh yeah somehow like those guilds ended up gutted from that path of progression i think and uh it ended up like for me at least like disconnected like I, I never really had any solid digital friendships or whatever through the green text because uh it was all happening in ventrilo or discord or in, in the actual raids that you'd run and uh yeah i was just never in a guild that was managing all that properly i guess and i had many alts and i would join a ton of guilds like every different alt that that i would have i would join different guilds but I think what it what it actually comes down to is like just like when I go to research my classes rotation and understand like kind of the inner mechanics of how to gear and progress them. I think you also kind of got to do that for finding your guild and and pushing raid progression or whatever your goal or focus is. If you go back and farm like old raids for mogs and stuff like that, I think you really have to go and do all that back end research on the interwebs to make it work in the game even for that i think that the compromise there is you can see that their main because you still understand the dungeon for the most part but yeah i wanted m pluses to be that... what i wanted m pluses to be was wrath of the lich king dungeon grinding where there was a chance that the best in slot item was actually a, a blue that dropped off of hard Anox or something like that it was off of a oh and it was i guess you could say the best pre-raid best in slot because i always remember going after the pre-raid best in slots and i would run those dungeons over and over and over in wrath of the lich king because you could wear the tabard and i would just boost all my reps up to exalted by wearing the different reps tabards and running those dungeons for the pre-raid best in slot gear and then also just like trying stuff out like if i wanted to get like a fully stam set i got all the stamina gear all the gear that has the most stamina or a full strength set just all the gear that has the most strength like you could go through with your little atlas loot wish list build that shit out and then just hit those dungeons those five or six dungeons over and over and maybe you got everything from one of them and you, you just down to four dungeons now that you run over and over i used to love that and then uh we would also exchange our lists so if like uh, one of my buddies needed a dungeon that I didn't need. We would just add that to the list of dungeons we'd queue for, and we would just run those again and again and again. So everybody got geared up. Like Raider IO did. Like at the main. I thought M pluses would be like that, but harder because you'd run with your friends. You'd do those dungeons so so many times. It'd be like it it gets kind of boring because it's not challenging anymore because you're getting geared and you're you're learning the pulls and you're learning the enemies. So M pluses would have been really cool to do with that style where like now you start getting affixes and oh, and now the gear gets better. That'd be cool. Main score, right? That's what I would say. You know what I mean? It's the fact that the gear upgrades are locked behind rating. Oh, okay. Uh, oh, I see. I see. I see. Yeah, I agree with that then. Oh, I see what I say because you had to. Yeah, okay. okay I misread that. So in the last season, once you got the all 15s or something, you could get everything. Yeah, on your alts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, I totally agree with that. That's fine. Yeah, I never knew anything about M pluses really. Breath, I didn't get into that, them. I mean, isn't the Valor badges like the more difficult part of it? The amount of Valor points you needed? I know in my guild, people were farming like plus twos or something. It was mental. It's absolutely wacky. Valor's uncapped now? Good. Because that was weird. They were just fucking spamming plus twos for gear. Really strange. Uh, more rep grinding. Ooh. Legos. These are the threads okay, created by the person that, that was banned from banned the out. account. This is the guy that was making the, the, the posts on the council that actually got banned. What do you think the biggest downside to legendaries in Shadowlands was? I would say it was the gold cost. <laughs> Even more than to Torghast. I had to lend multiple people gold because they in my guild they just couldn't afford to buy their legendaries. It was what it was insane. 
I've never seen anything like it. <laughs> I've never seen anything like it. I literally, I gave Kenny, I think, nearly a million gold. Because Kenny plays every fucking character. And he just couldn't afford legendaries. Damn. It's so weird. Stygian Embers, Domination Shards. I mean, that whole system is dead on arrival, right? Yeah, I didn't do any of that stuff. What did what did I feel every time I tried to log I fell off of Shadowlands in Corthia. I, I unlocked the base camp in Corthia and was like, all right, so then I just logged off. Down here. But I didn't even that really go after legendaries I like they're talking about. I logged into an alt and it was like, okay, I need to go and do Torghast and I need to like start farming Renown, even though it's not hard. And I always have this argument with people. It's like, it's not hard though, Mike. No, but it's fucking boring. Yeah, it takes a so long boring. time. And you can do it fast, but I don't care. Yeah. If you start doing multiple Torghast runs, that time adds up really quickly. Yep. Really quickly. If I did I, I did Torghast. I, did, I managed one I knew week better. of doing Torghast on all characters. I did it for no, one week. No, no. It took hours. I would not have. Literally hours. I tried so to do like different two different levels. people. Depends on which run you got. Uh-huh. What was the reward? The reward was not even a legendary. Ass. I needed to do it again the next week. And yeah. that might reward you with a legendary. But for someone like me, who wants to... I don't play Guardian Druid. I play a Druid. Yep. I want to play Moonkin. I want to play Resto. I want to play Feral. I want to play Guardian. That's four legendaries. Yeah, buddy. And I ended up... And I'm sure many of you have been in the same boat. <laughs> I ended up looking at legendaries that just worked across all specs, even though they weren't particularly great, just so I didn't have to fucking farm them. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? I just ended up looking at dog legendaries, just so I didn't have to fucking play Torghast. That was it. Like That's what I ended up doing. I was like, well, which one works across all four, even if it's like mediocre? Oh, what's the RP? It's so I'm crazy because really he loved the uh, Torghast when it first came out. About I remember RP, him and Finn RP giggling about Torghast. It might be of interest to you. Awesome. RPers are the best people in this game for the most part. That community is rock and roll. I never got to know so RPers like that. A lot of will see features specifically targeting role players, which it should. You make up a small portion of the player base, but we can still hope. More features, more interest, right? That's how it works. You throw attention at it, and then you're likely to get some more interest. I know, huh? Uh, here are a few useful links to other posts in Community Council we thought were relevant to this post. Oh, it's like a summary. Dude, go just go and have a look at the RP servers. Those guys are having a blast. They're having so much fun. Uh, expression. More character customization options. Who doesn't want that? Uh, no, not just new hairstyles, but new types of customization. About a height slider that changes the size of your model. I uh, fully agree. Not just even from an RP perspective. Class customization. You're a mage. Why shouldn't you be able to have your eyes glow when you cast spells? I mean... <laughs> Why would they Chris, make it cool? Go back to Wrath of the Lich King and find the video I did on this of Kata. 100%. Being able to... I, I don't get... It doesn't seem that impossible to me, but maybe uh, somebody knows better than I do. That you should be able to fully customize your spell colors. Ooh... This is something totally be able to do that. my buddy James and I was talking Same about spell, like five colors. years ago, boys That's and girls. So good. And we, we made this video, I think, in Cataclysm. I think it's because funny. it was like uh, Age of Conan or Unchained or some shit like that. One of them games had it to where you could actually design your spells and what they did. Like, that would have been cool for a while. Have some that. Shit like that. Uh, yeah, it was after Green know. Fire was out. It's like, I should totally be able to like, there should be a profession that allows you to alter the color of your spells. I would love my pyro. I would. I want when I'm playing a fire mage, right? And I'm doing pyro, inferno blast, phoenix flames. I want to look like a unicorn of gay pride, <laughs> literally jizzing all over the box. That's what I want to look like. Because why? That fucking makes me really happy. That's what I want to look. <laughs> it's funny because I think I remember. <laughs> I don't think it was him. I think it was Asmogold seeing uh, Final Fantasy combat for the first time and all the lights and everything. And they're like, that's too much. Like, I want to look like I want wings. I want the full fucking thing. And I just want to be splurging. But now that's the standard. All over the place. <laughs> that's what I want to look like. I want to look like a literal pride flag cannon shooting at the boss. I think the difference the is time played hunter, with the character. The fucking you start to realize which effects are yours. So you understand a little bit more what's stuff. going on. 
paid stalker. I'm it finding should be a profession. as well. You like have to visit someone who augments your spell colors. Learning the other classes in Final Fantasy is helping me identify the other spells being cast too. And uh, running in trusts, <laughs> I'm starting to be able to pick up on what uh, like uh, Thancred means whenever he's like uh, he says something when he activates his heart of the light and he protects everybody. Ooh. He's like, get ready, let's go, or something. It's like, chink, 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 chink. But yeah, I'm starting to recognize those as well. Like, what their character. shouts yes! mean, what they're doing. I still use Deviant Fish. <laughs> Transforming your characters. I carry a stack of like 200. As a druid, it is, it's real. I like, I have Noggin Fogger because uh, in low ceiling dungeons, like where you're running around inside of doorways and stuff like that, all you see is bare ass <laughs> in front of you. You can't, you can't see shit unless you're in first uh, person or something. a very limited duration. Right! Oh, they die after they disappear after death. If you want to be a ghost, I have uh, either to spend a fortune on spectral potions. I use multiple separate toys. Yes! That's what yes. I would do. I'd do multiple yes, separate yes, toys, yes, yes, yes. spectral potions, noggin There used to be the argument. I'm not sure if Blizzard make Deviate this. Delight. But... Uh, it was wrong to use multiple transformations all the time because people couldn't tell what gear you had, but that's no longer even remote. You can relevant. inspect now. At all. Also, in PvP, especially and in That's literally PvP what a druid is. Like that, you should be able to add way more com comedy stuff in non serious, non, non, um, non rated content. Like, a major sheep should be able to turn you into a clown, a fucking snowman, all sorts of shit. Or at least make it a themed week where that happens. Like, it should totally make it that happen. More animated emotes. Firstly, I want to be able to customize your stance, walk animations, perhaps facial expressions when idle. There's a whole lot of emotes already existing again that you can apply, such as leaning against the wall. That'd be crazy if they added all that. Slice and ten. All right, all right, all right. I'm into all uh, that stuff, too. Housing. Like, <laughs> um, uh, better guild that's what Garrison were. All guild icons and colors haven't aged particularly well. I would like to see more options for guild mounts, pets, banners, toys, transmogs. Mm -hmm. Copium. Yeah, Copium. Yeah, 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 One yeah. day. One day. Uh, cross faction. I think this is coming at this point, right? The player base has gotten too small. I imagine they're going to do this. A dungeon master mode. This mode would allow you to temporarily phase an area so that you and your friends can temporarily role play in that area by yourselves. Ooh. Cross faction accessibility would well, just kind of like negate hey, all the work I did for the 24 oh, maybe characters. Even for the cinematic <laughs> option? Oh, maybe, yeah. <laughs> I'd still have 24 characters, which is it. So <laughs> I'd have 12 Imagine more what than we I needed. Do with that, Chris. So fun. Essentially playing D and D and WoW. Oh God, yeah. That's what I wished. That would be so good. Man, even before so Legion, I mean, such a great someone invited me to game play D&D. Well. &D. People create these their own in-game cinematic. It was Miss of Pandaria, I think. Wasn't it? What was before Legion? Wad? It wasn't Wad. Not not the one. I I remember an expansion where somebody invited me to RP on and play D&D &D on an RP server. And I went I don't know what server it was. It was an RP server. I went. I remember I needed to get gear, he, and I, I made like a level one end dead guy. I had to run to Terran Mill, and, and I got like some RP gear. And it was like, I killed a bunch of stuff along the way to earn enough money <laughs> to buy the RP gear. And then they ended up giving me a completely different set, a better set that looked more like RP, like appealing, I guess. It was cleaner looking gear. And we sat there, and it was... Uh, it was like rolls in the chat. I had to roll in the chat. And then, uh, like, he just started, like, narrating. He just started, like, typing to me. Like, so it was It was more like what I expected was D&D &D World of Warcraft style. But what it actually was, was it was a tabletop D&D &D at your friend's house. But we're typing through the, here, and it's a lot harder because we have to type everything we say is because we're not sitting at a table talking to each other. So it was like, ah, oh, this isn't what I expected. I thought they were going to use the buildings in the game, the NPCs in the game. I thought they'd like think ahead to like the type of quest you would have to do, incorporate that into the D and D campaign, like actually have World of Warcraft quests and the D and D scenario set up. Maybe I was expecting too much, <laughs> essentially, without having to use the machinima tools. Mm. Yes. Mm. Yes. Dungeon and raid area accessibility. Let's add a new dungeon and raid difficulty. The problem is, they'd release this, and within at least three minutes, someone will have a video of Queen Ashara 
doing some <laughs> filthy fucking who shit. Who cares, like, man? Like, like how is that not options? happening with Final so Fantasy if that's your argument? They would, man. Well, somebody, yeah, somebody but that's what's going to happen. Else within like two minutes, and then it would get like deplatformed. Oh, it would get taken out. That done. You, what are you, you know protecting? It. You know it. <laughs> Which is, I mean, that's fine. I don't actually have a problem with that. I think Blizzard has a problem with that. Uh like we can't do you know we can't have this tool which would be awesome because somebody's going to abuse it dude you could buy a birthday cake and somebody's going to try and sit you and can fart on it. download there's any no unreal engine the, can't you the degeneracy I mean, of gamers there's just no getting around it it doesn't matter how you could get you could get blender so you kind of have to deal with you could sculpt you your own right? models <laughs> it already yeah exactly it already exists people who really want to see that are going all out a face toggle for raids, like everyone in the raids. You can't control place, what people are consuming on the internet, like for that's for sure. Oh, cool. Well, let's at least get some graphical updates for Stormwind and the other major cities. They were particularly dated in comparison to the news ones. Uh, give us back our cities and a few more while we're at it. Gilnea, Suruma, Undercity, Nomergon, Mechagon, Teldrassil. And more. Why not? I like this person. Give this us back our get... cities. They want Teldrassil back. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is the guy that got banned, isn't it? <laughs> 10 out of 10. Not even an RP. Wonderful suggestions. Absolutely wonderful suggestions. Let me start with saying the Mage Tower is awesome. I've rarely had more fun dying over and over and slowly making changes to get further into the fights and close, closer to my elusive transmog sets. Mage I'm Tower. Push over. Yes, there are tons of posts complaining about it's too hard, impossible, or a waste of time. You know what I haven't heard about? And it's kind of got me in a little bit of an alarm in the back of my subconscious because I actually do like World of Warcraft and I've played it for a long time. Is uh, what are the rewards for the Mage Tower? Like, I'm assuming it's weapons and I haven't looked at it. So I'm just like, yeah, it's probably weapons. But if it's like a robe or something, if it's like, you know, a, 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 like a, a, a halo effect or some shit like that, like, I don't fucking know. Like, if it's wings or something, what are the Mage Tower? This is why I almost resubscribed last night, too, because I'm like, what if it's not just what I think it is? Uh, Mage Tower Rewards. Uh, Shadowlands. Because if this is, it is gear. It's fucking gear, isn't it, son of a bitch? All right, we're going to call an audible here. During the Legion Mage Tower. What is this? Hold on. During Legion Mage Tower, awarded most specs new appearances or Admiral Webb transmogs, but for Guardian Druids, Mage Tower altered. Mage Tower prizes an alternate bear form, silhouette, and animation. or something nothing else like this in the game before. In Legion Time Walking, Guardians who complete the High Lord's Return Challenge wear bear form. Oh my god. And these are armor mints? Oh, they got jelly. Everybody got jelly in Legion because the bears. The bears got entire entire model changes. And they just got weapons. So now they want gear. I could get this gear. Fuck, man. I gotta do this shit, don't I? <laughs> I gotta do this. I gotta do this mage tower shit. It's easier now though, right? So it's even better for me because I've waited and now it's just gonna be easier to do. And I'll get the people saying, oh, you did the easier version. And then I'll be like, well, I look the same as you, bro. <laughs> let's let's finish what Preach is saying. I'm gonna go find my credit card. Oh, actually, I got it right here. Cosmetics for completing a very challenging <laughs> solo encounter. The mage tower had been a pushover. We did the same post in reverse. What a joke, not worth the wait. Uh, frankly, I'm glad it's a former. With all that said, it would be tragic to put all the pulls and effort into the Mage Tower deactivate before getting rewarded for a kill. Oh, this is... Uh, the, they're, they're closing it again, right? They're baiting me, guys. They're still going ahead with just not leaving it open. Yeah. And they're still going ahead with that. They're closing uh, the Mage Tower? Oh, God. Wait. Master oh, no. A topic where a decent... What do you say? Around it. it doesn't matter how innocent it is. So, yeah, exactly. Already, everyone in the... World. Let's at least get some graphical updates for Stormwind and the other mage. Uh, mage Tower? And more. My mage Tower? Yeah. 10 out of 10. Not even an RP. Here. Mage Tower? Have more fun dying over and over and slowly making changes to get further into the fight. Let me start by saying the Mage Tower is also rarely had more fun dying, making changes to further in the fights, closer to my elusive transmog sets. I'm personally very happy the difficult challenge, not a push over. Tons of posts complaining about how it's too hard, impossible, or a waste of time. The beauty is that there's no power gain associated with the base tower. 
All you get is cosmetics for completing a very challenging solo encounter. If it had been a pushover, we'd see the same post with a joke not worth a prayer cloud. Glad it's with all that said. Tragic pulls efforts may deactivate before getting rewarded with the kill. It would be tragic to put all the pulls and effort into the mage tower deactivate before getting rewarded with a kill. I don't understand. With all that said, it would be tragic to put all the pulls and effort into have in to have the mage tower deactivate before getting rewarded with the kill. This time of year is busy. A lot of players look forward to Christmas break, play wow, extended mage tower beyond Christmas would be a welcome and jump on the fence. Oh, they're trying to extend the mage tower because it's like almost over. Is that right? So I need to get in now. It's act fast while supplies last. Oh, okay. Gonna have to act fast. Okay, I just have to resubscribe to World of Warcraft. That's all I gotta do. Just subscribe to it. Just, oh, hold on a second, guys. Hold on. We'll leave Preach playing. He's talking about stuff. Go ahead, man. I'm happy that it's a difficult challenge, not a pushover. Yes, there are tons of posts complaining about it's too hard, impossible, or a waste of time. The beauty of it is that there is no power gain associated with a maze tower. All you can get is cosmetics for completing a very challenging solo encounter. Oh, you, you know what? Thinking of power gain? What a joke. How <laughs> much have they upped the item level? How much of a treadmill am I on here? Am I subscribing the final week just to do the 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 transmog or the mage tower? This is what's going to happen, guys. I'm going to call it here. If I subscribe now and the mage tower ends, I will have subscribed for a cosmetic I can't obtain. The only way that's going to happen is if I subscribe now. I'm not powerful enough to take on the mage tower because I didn't sit there on that Torghast legendary grind that Preach was just going on. And I find out that I do have to do the Torghast legendary climb and it's going to take longer than a week. And then they got me. They got me for that month. But then they also got me for the subsequent months because I'm mad and I want to get geared up so I could be powerful enough to take anything like a mage tower on. And then I'll, I'll realize there's no more mage tower anyways. I'll have all this gear, nothing to do in the game. I'll be a little salty. I'll start getting ready to quit the game. And then they'll be like, hey, we're bringing the mage tower back, guys, for those of you who missed the skins. <laughs> and then I'll be like, oh, now I got to stay. And then they got me on the hook for the next year. That's what it is, guys. That's what it is. I think if you've been burned before, you shouldn't get burned again. So so you guys witnessed. I almost I put in all the deets, too. I almost did. I almost resubscribed. You're not going to get me, wow. You're not going to give me. That was a cool skin. And you know I'm heavily invested in the game. They're, they're but that's the again, mistake right? you made. You made they're a still mistake. Going ahead with just not leaving and, it uh, open. That's yeah. not something I'm going to pay they're for. still going ahead with that. Uh, Master Looter. Oh, God. Master Looter. A topic where a decent portion of the cutting edge and more casual mythic players agree and disagree. On top of the developers giving their philosophy prior, that said, I thought this would be bring up in part due to a recent statement based on external players' buffs by Sigma. One of the most difficult aspects of this topic is social tension. Sometimes people argue with their teammates about buffs. It's very understandable to me why one possible response uh, someone might have for it is that it can put you at odds with your own group mates. So stamp it out. The flip side of that is uh, this is part and parcel of playing with real people in a large cooperative group, preserving the human element of group play in WoW, not boiling it down to predictable mechanical interactions. It's an important value. See, for example, the common lament that group finder content has lost of the human interaction from the experience. Mechanics that involve interacting with groupmates bring out both the good and the bad of that, and that might be better than having neither, as well as revisiting a topic where there might be a philosophical change. Yep. Philosophical change. Entirely. What is Master Luda? Yeah. Uh, I mean, Master I Lude is a way for you to not waste yours and other people's time and still accomplish hard objectives and push your upper level or upper limit of your collective group to higher heights. It's a way to do that without wasting anybody's time. It's to and and not having that's just basically like keeping you on the treadmill longer, which is all the tactics we've seen deployed here today, apparently. 
I mean, which is the community council, people talking about all the stuff we love about the game, making us nostalgic about the game, making us rethink all the stuff that we missing out about the game. And like, this is all I mean, tactics, guys. Don't fall for that shit. One, I don't care about a ninja. <laughs> I really don't Right. Care. Let, let there be them. ninjas. Uh, exile and outcast those people, people and uh, it'll go Jeremy. back to being a, 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 it's, it used to be a reputation game. Like, the reputation of your character. Like, you would meet a lot of the same people doing some of the same shit you had to do because, or the same shit that you wanted to do because they had to do it too. Like, you would meet each other, like, at these little milestones and crossroads <laughs> and it was, that's how the game used to work the game used to be you meet people at crossroads and that was the way the game was designed throughout the whole progression from early levels all the way to the end and you would form bonds and friendships and you would get to know like who the players are on your server and who's who's playing during the times that you play and it was a vast open world that not a lot of people explored so it was like Almost like pioneer days, like in the in the West where you're settling across the plains and there was this hospitality where like you would let somebody that was traveling stay in the barn because you know they came from a far way and they probably still got a far way to go and they could earn their keep as long as they needed to rest up or, you know, get ready for the rest of their trip. But in, and that was like an idea of like even in the South, they call Southern hospitality. Like you gave people the benefit of the doubt and you treated them like they were good people unless they gave you reason to otherwise. But yeah, yeah. About it for the, last the game years, don't work that much. way no more. So it's never been an issue for me. But I do. Now do you can't even Rams. give people the benefit of the doubt. So it's don't trust anybody. Time where I endlessly, endlessly hear about people being abused over items. And as we know. Looking at that Warforged thread, people really, really care about loot. Really, really care. I still want Master Loot back, though. That's why loot was the it's way. It's so like... style balanced to Mage Tower, let it open only two weeks. Yeah, I know. It's a weird decision. I mean, I don't think they... Honestly, having spoke to them... Loot just represents what people care about. If you could trust people whenever you're talking about what we all care about, then that forms stronger bonds. I'm going to be right back. I'm going to let this play. I think my cat needs it. Uh, I'm not sure how it is now, but it's not something they particularly thought too much about, I don't think. Um, when you speak to them about stuff like this, it's usually just a case we just didn't think about that aspect of it. Uh, they are human after all, but they have had time to change it now, and they're still going to close it, so... The drama of watching the race to all first and how to make it better. Conversations are happening about the race to all first, and it's getting my jimmies all rustled. Uh, one of the things I look forward to the most in the start of a new patch since it's a real birth in BFA is watching the race to world first. Feels like Echo, who? Limit, who? Method, who? Pieces, winners. Fat Shark, yes. And many, many more all tearing through the Mythic Raid at a pace no one else can. Showcasing their expertise of their class and working as a cohesive unit to kill bosses as quickly as possible. And broadcast in many ways. It never gets old. One of the coolest things to watch is the adaptation. For example, in the most recent Race to World First, Echo discovered at the Enraged time that Sylvanas did not, in fact, die at 50%. Yeah. <laughs> it was assumed that she would then die at 45 cents, which ended up being the case. Uh, I think I showed you the conversations where we were, like, sending videos backwards and forwards to Limit as well, where we did see some kills happening at, like, 49.2. If it wasn't for that, ed that thing that someone discovered saying 45... There would definitely have been way more pulls there because they were analyzing this video. I think it was Vappies who said this video is like she died here at 49.2 and here she died at 49.6. <laughs> and she was still casting something in Echo's one. But Echo somehow managed to, over the course of many pulls and planning, squeak out initial 5 cent damage on Sylvanas. Wasn't that close. It was a pretty scrappy pull where they got the 50. Uh, the same amount of time as they barely crossed the 50%. There's no other word for it other than amazing. It was true. One thing I think we can also agree on is, the, most is that the number of bosses, Guardian, KT, were big letdowns. They expected Guardian. Oh, that was sad, wasn't it? Do you feel bad for Guardian? I do. <laughs> who got who got the rawest deal, Guardian or Kalthazad? Who got the rawest deal in the latest raid? I mean, I think it was Kalthazad, right? Yeah, KT got the rawest deal. Yeah, for sure. Poor old KT. We expected Guardian to be the new sludgy. Uh, which people like Limit Max had already expressed as one of the most perfectly tuned bosses ever, and instead it just kind of fell over. On the flip side, Painsmith was the second best example of adaptation we saw in the raid, and its submission spike rolled with no gaps. Amazing. It just never gets old. 
Uh, so going forward, the repetitive theme here is adaptation. A lot of the new mythic mechanics are known well in advance of the race due to mythic testing in the dungeon journal. Uh, but I would like to see mythic testing stop. I know it won't forever happen, but would it really be such a thing to let the mythic dungeon journal locked until after the race? Or open it until X number of guilds kills the mythic encounter. There's something that won't affect you or me in the game, but it would be enjoyment with races will first even better. Uh, yeah. Sounds good. Okie dokie. Sounds good to me. If they can, if they, as long as the bosses aren't broken, that's the, the fear that I have about it. Is all too often in the past, when they didn't do the testing, the bosses were just flat out fucking broken. That's the issue. I, 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 I don't updated know my title to Mage Tower. Anymore. <laughs> and you, I did know who used to do it, and they don't do it anymore. I almost did. I, I almost really like to know who's doing the internal testing. All right, Breach. This isn't that bad. I've got to be honest, man. This council thing ain't that bad. This is all kind of cool stuff. I, I like that those conversations are happening, but 